Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this removal video. This is actually two removal videos in one. Um, these are actually within a, like the same day. Um, both are bald-faced hornets. However, the one is basically what you're used to seeing me do, where I vacuum up the foragers and majority of the adults. And then I remove the nest and take it home and then feed some larvae to my chickens. But there was another removal I had to do for uh, a fella that was a little ways away. Actually, he, somebody who watches my YouTube videos, which is pretty cool. And um, his nest was pretty high up. It was about 15, 15 feet up above, above the uh, driveway. And I had to snip it down. And there was really no way for me to get my vacuum up there to vacuum up the forager. So I had to snip the nest down in a special way. So you guys can check out how that uh, how that unfolds a little bit later on in the video. So this nest this nest was a little bit of a smaller nest. It was even though it's pretty close to full term. Um, see, there's three adults there. They're actually laying simultaneously. It's pretty cool. All right, so I bumped the nest, and you get to see them swarming out. I mean, it just the numbers in this nest is pretty phenomenal. Even though it was a smaller nest. Yeah, they they weren't short on hands as far as uh, having some adults available to build. So how bald-faced hornets act is when they go out to swarm, they will come out, they will swarm the individual or the target, which was me in this case, in the vacuum, and then they go basically fly around a little bit. They they sting the area, they dive bomb, they don't latch on like other yellow jackets, and then what they'll do is they go right back to the hole. So even though they're swarming around, I just keep the nozzle of the vacuum pretty much right at the entranceway of the nest, and that's as soon as they start flying back before they land, they get sucked up into the vacuum. Um, I know I've mentioned this to, uh, in my other videos. For those of you who don't know, the vacuum is to suck the adults into the vacuum while they're mid-flight, not while they land. Once they landed, so as they're taking off or as they're landing. Um, that's when the vacuum is, effect is effective. Um, it's not really to suck them off the nest. Um, and I also don't want a stronger vacuum because I don't want it destroying the nest when I'm trying to um, get the adults. I don't want th the hose clogging up or I don't want the, um, or in this case, I just don't want to destroy the nest. So. Um, so I'm just going around here. I kept the vacuum nozzle propped so it could just suck, suck up the adults while I um, wasn't there holding it the whole time. Um, then just kind of went around and started trimming some of the branches that were attached to the nest, just so I could get it off and bagged easier. So I had my loppers with me today. Well, this day wasn't actually today, but uh, so I had my loppers with me and um, finding the main structure branch that's holding the whole thing up. And I'm still trying to be delicate because I don't like to rich around on the branch um, that's holding the nest because I don't want it to rip. Because um, I, I, I don't know how well they secured the comb to it. I don't know how well the paper envelope is um, adhering to it. Here you can see the, the two adults get sucked up right away. So I had this running for quite a while and um, I felt like I got the majority of the adults. However, there's, it doesn't matter how long you have the vacuum running. Like you, Once you take the nest down, there's always a returning forager. Um, so it's just kind of a gamble how long you leave it on for. But uh, even though I was snipping around the nest, not there weren't any coming out of the actual um, entranceway. So whoever were left inside of the nest were either new adults in the queen, um, or adults that um, weren't getting the pheromone response to attack. So, so this was the uh, that was the last structure piece that needed to be snipped. So I was able to get it down. So once the nest is down, the f returning adults don't really know where to go. So they kind of just will fly around, and but they usually still go to the the location of the hole where the hole used to be, um, entranceway. So what I found that if I put my vacuum nozzle towards where the, facing the same direction of where the hole of the nest was, the entranceway, the returning it foragers will actually fly right into that hole. They just see a, a black hole and they'll fly into it because they, even though it doesn't look like the nest around it, it's still, it's a hole for them to fly into. So this is virtually in the same location. You can kind of see she's a little bit unsure, but I already sucked up two doing this uh, technique. Um, but then she, uh, she eventually succumbs to her desire to go into the hole. Ha <laughs> ha. 
that one went in. I think I'd change over the to the next frame then before you see her go. Oh, I know she went in. All right, so this was actually the next removal. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty high up in this tree, and uh, I wanted to slow it down a little bit so you could get a good glimpse of it. I didn't leave it on long enough, my camera. So I figured I'd get a couple shots of uh, me putting on my suit. For those of you who don't really see that much in my other videos, we don't expose the nasty. So we skip right to the pants being pulled up. And then uh, shirt sweater being put on, one leg at a time for the suit. The suit, I always leave the pant leg around my heel, so that way it just gives me extra protection around my ankles. I've been stung on my ankles, and that sucks. There's nothing itchier than your ankles being stung. So once the suit was on, I used the pole as kind of like a stood back and just kind of eyed up the direction as to how well the nest was going to fall, as you can see what I was going to do. Uh, just drop the nest directly into the bin with the lid right there, and then get the uh, the lid on top right away, so that way uh, no adults come flying out. So I'm just kind of eyeing up how plumb the bucket is directly underneath the, the nest for it to drop into. So getting the, getting my snipper pole right onto the branch that's holding it, and one pull of it, and then down she goes. And really quickly getting the lid on, and then strike a rocky pose. Da -da -da. <laughs> it's funny watching the pole drop because of how like how bendy wendy it is. Snap it on there pretty proud of myself and then a slow motion with the rocky pose Shping. so then once the adults were um, majority of the adults were in the the nest um, I needed a way to spray up top because there was still a significant amount of foragers coming back and I couldn't really quite reach with on the top of my ladder even though my ladder gets pretty high so I decided to do the ingenious thing of duct taping one of my black flag cans to the snipper pole and then taking an oil cap like an oil bottle cap and taping that to the center of the piece of tape and then putting that right onto the uh, right onto the trigger mechanism for the spray can then taping it down into the spray position so as you can see there it's already spraying and I'll tell you what this worked like a charm uh, they didn't see me coming and I was able to hit a good cluster of them that were kinda congregating up in one of the branches and there's probably about 20 of them and was able to hit them pretty good with this and unfortunately this was after the fact after I'd already tested out the trick to see if it worked and then this was kind of just to get a few of the flying around foragers but it worked really well I was pretty proud of that of course I didn't turn the microphone on so you can't hear anything other than me talking in the voiceover so. it's a cool little nest it's gonna relocate it but it wasn't wasn't transferring well enough. In other words, it was a hot day and the um, the nest didn't survive the transportation from Newark, Delaware up to um, Upper Lidditz, which is about an hour and a half drive. So, unfortunately, didn't quite make it that far. this nest looked like it had some some damage to it and there weren't a lot of adults inside of it and I was half wondering if it wasn't affected if it wasn't infested with something so I decided to cut it open and lo and behold it definitely did have some bug damage to it which turned out to be earwigs um, as you guys know my spout nest had met its demise from earwigs and um, that was the first time I'd ever seen that happen to an, an actual live nest and uh, so this is the first time seeing that actually happen. So this nest I put in the refrigerator for about a day or so 
so that way the workers that were inside of it would be pretty sluggish and wouldn't come out and attack me. So as you can see there, there's one sitting right on top of the queen comb, and she's uh, she's still pretty sluggish and kind of waking up. It's a pretty cool baldy nest. You'll see in the comments where I say baldy. That's short, just short for bald-faced hornet. It's really, really wild how they build over that this branch. So there's quite a few inside there. They're still sleeping because it's had them in the refrigerator. So they're still pretty slow, but <laughs> they will wake up. They actually start waking up too as I'm starting to pluck them out. Um, I didn't want to kill them because I was I was hoping to uh, have them as a, just a trial to see if they would adopt my other nest, the, the two relocated nests that I put side by side. It's now a big conglomerate. Something's been eating at this eating at this nest. brain food. Tweezing off adults isn't nearly as fun as tweezing out larvae. Just so you know. They're more delicate in the sense that you, you know, you're trying not to hurt them. So you gotta kinda, you, you have to be precise about where you put the tweezers. You gotta get them right between their abdomen and their thorax. As I call it, their waste. I was trying to get all these out of here because it's going to be a mess otherwise. There's definitely some kind of bug damage here. I don't know if it's mite or earwig. I didn't see the earwig at first, but it was still crawling around in the comb. Really interesting comb, though. You can see down inside here. All those cells are all chewed up. It's just dead cells. Looks like there's parts of, like, partially formed adults in there. So it makes me think that there was an earwig or something was eating it, and then the adults were chewing the rest of the decay out. But there's no eggs laid in there, so the queen was busy. Pretty cone though. Hate to have to destroy it. But once those adults start to wake up, it's going to get pretty chaotic, so you got to get them out. And this made a lot of sense, too, as to why there weren't as many adults coming out of the nest. And it's because as they were developing, the earwig is going in and killing and, ch and eating the, um, the partially formed or pupating adults. And that's why I was finding remnants of, like, half their bodies and things inside those cells. Some of these are new adults, and some of these are active adults. I think he meant mature adults. LOL. Mature adults, I should say. I thought of it first. When tweezing adults, the best way to grab them right at the waist. I don't know if you can see that. Hang on. Best way to grab them is right at the waist.
couple new queens in this nest. That is a tub of pretty angry hornets. Yellow jackets. This nest was definitely having problems with earwigs. I told you guys it was earwigs and that's definitely what it was. See, one just crawled there at the bottom of the screen, but I didn't notice it until after I moved the, uh, the comb to the side. It's amazing that that can take down a whole hornet's nest. What I call the weasel of the insect world. There's that little weasel. Just trying to give a good backdrop for it so the camera can focus. Alright buddy, off you go. I didn't kill it. Just saying, I didn't kill it. Unlike that spider from the spout nest that I keep getting crap for. Look how much damage to that comb. This is a good healthy comb. Queen comb. It's damaged comb. Look how like it's chewed away in here. It's definitely earwig damage. And for you larvaholics, a much awaited larva tweezing portion of the video. I haven't included much of this in just because there hasn't been much actual tweezing going on. It is very time consuming to spend time tweezing out the larva. But this nest wasn't going to be used for anything and I wasn't really sure how much of this nest I wanted the, the girls to peck at. Um, you know, as much as I was pretty confident it was earwigs, I didn't want there to be anything in here um, parasite related that could be potentially harmful to the girls. So I just decided to tweeze out the larvae that were healthy, which were pretty much all of them. Interestingly enough, whenever I've seen earwig damage in wasp nests like this, it seems like the earwigs don't attack the larvae. It seems like they just attack the pupating adults. So I don't know what the difference is there or why they decide to go for them. Maybe they don't like the mushiness of the of the larvae or something. But you see a lot of, still a lot of the damaged cells and you know people ask if the queens will reuse the cells over again after an adult has hatched from that particular cell. And the literature and the research papers that I've read says that they will not reuse the same cells twice. And that's just not true. I mean, I, I like to try to believe entomology departments and these um, colleges and things that study these. But I've seen many, many nests where there's, like, as you can see, like, where the white caps used to be on these, like, top middle. You can see eggs laid inside of there. So that white cap has been removed by an already pupated adult. And then the queen went back over that same cell and relayed eggs. So, like I said, as much as I like to agree with research papers and things, they're not researching every nest. So, um, just like any other aspect of life, um, they don't follow rules um, 100%. You know, there's no law that they follow. They do whatever they want to do, and um, each nest is very different. Each colony is very different. So you can see different stages of pupation here. Um, there's some partially formed white 
adults. There's um, larvae that start to have the eyes formed on them. There's larvae that still just look like larvae. Then there's one like that where it's it has the color of a larva, but it's got all the uh, anatomy of an adult wasp. And the um, the partially formed adults are very, very delicate. Like, more delicate than larvae. Larvae at least have kind of a thick skin about them. But once they start going through that pupation, and it's, they get really, really tender. And it's really hard to pull out without, without tearing them open. And it sounds bar barbaric, but they're going to get eaten anyway. I mean, it's not like they're... I'm saving them by tweezing them out. It doesn't hurt them. Like, the larvae doesn't hurt them to come out. Like, I mean, laying on the in that jar, it's it's not like they're in pain or that they're suffering. I mean, they're, it's really no different than them being in the cell. Um, people often ask how long they can survive outside the cell. They, they can last a long time. I mean, I've had I've had them in, in little bowls like that for 12 hours. I mean, they were in the refrigerator just to keep them kind of slow down their metabolism and slow down their uh, their need to eat. Um, but as soon as they warm up, they're back to their wiggly self and, um, you know, looking for food. The cell doesn't do any protecting as much as it, it's just like a place for them to kind of be organized to be fed and, um, and then once they're actually ready to, to go through their metamorphosis, then it gives them a place to, to, um, to pupate. Another thing to take notice to too on this nest is the, the sporadic placement of the white caps and the sporadic placement of the larva. Oftentimes with bald faced hornets you'll find that the um, that the white caps are in like a perfect circle, so the nest almost looks like a bullseye. This nest, it's very sporadic, and I think it's just because of the of the attack of the infestation of term or of um, earwigs. It was causing them to have to attack and probably rip out certain cells and then the queen just kind of was laying eggs into any spot that there was a free unoccupied and um, not contaminated cell this was the first pretty much full term nest I've ever seen that looked this disorganized and I don't think this nest would have lasted to the end of the season anyway there were queen combs, and, and um, they were unscathed so far by the earwigs, but given a little bit more time, the earwigs may have found their way into those and uh, compromised them as well. There's some forming adults there. I was able to get this one out in one piece. You can see the legs. Everything's formed. It just hasn't gotten that hard shell on it yet. But it's very, very soft and delicate. Pull another one out here. So that one kind of broke open. There's no nice way to do that, unfortunately. There's a pretty much formed adult there in the center. It looks a little bit like hazy, and that's just because it wasn't quite its time to come out yet. It's it's formed, but it hasn't its its hard shell body hasn't uh, fully formed yet. It's still kind of waxy, and their cover colors get more vivid um, as it's time for them to come out. Whoops. I know you guys like to see the uh, the white caps being pulled off and seeing the different stages of uh, forming adults and things.
Something I would like to try too in the future is to get a um, pretty much like a small cell to put one of these forming adults into. See, this is practically a fully formed adult here. She's um, she was pretty much ready to start chewing her way through in the next day or so. But to get make like a little cell very similar to this and make it a little bit bigger and start feeding, put a larva in it and start feeding her and seeing if I can get one to grow and then pupate and then make a full adult. Might be a good wintertime project. I do have a couple of nests in the refrigerator and um, I can wake up the adults out of that nest um, once that I found. If I try to re-cool them down after waking them up once, then they, they, uh, they don't survive. Um, I was able to do it with my queen over the last winter. Um, Princess Zelda. It's definitely a queen larva. But um, that was because I kept waking her up and then giving her food and then putting her back in there so she was able to have sustenance. So these are queen or male larvae. Um, there's really no way to tell the difference between the two other than just being able to tell that they are one or the other because of the size of the cell and obviously the size of the larva. Worker larvae are a lot smaller because they're fed less and they're in smaller cells. The larger cells gives them more room to grow, and once they're laid, the workers will focus their attention on the queen and male larva and feed them a lot more. Therefore, they get bigger because they have more nutrition. So larvae are basically external stomachs for the adults. The adults will go out and they'll forage and they'll hunt food, chunk food like bugs and things. They bring it back, chew it up, and then they split it up between the, the, um, the nursery adults who are like tend to the larva, and they, um, they divvy it out to the larva to eat. So what the larva do is they chew on it, and crunch it up, and then eat it, and then the byproduct of that is like a sugar water that has enzymes and protein in it. And what will happen is they'll, the adults will come over and just kind of check on larvae that have already eaten, and the larva sense the uh, adults by vibration and they regurgitate a little bead of clear fluid and the adults will drink that. So the, the, they feed the larva the chunk food that they cannot eat. They can't process chunk food themselves. Um, their waists are too small to digest. And um, so they feed the, the larva the chunk food. The larva eat it, chop it up, act like an external stomach, and then regurgitate the fluid like they're peeing and the adults will eat that that nutritious fluidy treat and uh, so that's how they get their food now adults will also eat nectar from flowers so if they're out foraging and they're, they get really tired or overheated they will stop at flowers and um, eat nectar I've seen that quite a bit uh, especially around here at my house I have three nests um, bald-faced hornet nests and I do see the bald-faced hornets go to flowers. I have a lot of flowers here on my property and um, a lot of gardens. And um, I do see the bald-faced hornets fluttering around flowers every now and then to get the nectar. So they do pollinate everybody. For those of you who think they are just evil for whatever reason, just because they sting you if you're around their nest. Let me just say, if you had an intruder come in your house, I think you would probably be protective and do what you can to try to keep someone away. And that's what bald-faced hornets do and all other types of wasps. They aren't just stinging you because they feel like it. They're stinging you because you're a threat. They think that you're a threat. You think you're going to try to destroy their, their home. So they attack. Another question I get is, uh, there's an interestingly uh, forming adult. Another question I get is about the stingers. Um, the stinger is actually called an ovipositor, which is only um, a, an attribute or an anatomy um, piece of the female workers and the female wasps. Male workers do not have the ovipositor or the stinger. Basically the same way as that uh, male humans do not have a vaginal canal. It's virtually pretty much what it is. Um, it is a means of queens and female workers to lay eggs. And it also acts as an, an basically like a hypodermic needle that they can um, sting their prey 
and paralyze it while they carry it home or chew it up or do whatever they have to do. Um, and in the sense of the males, they do not have an ovipositor or a stinger. So this is more queen comb, but these were cells that were built probably last out of all the combs that were built. And uh, just a few queen eggs were laid and just, just a few larvae were developing. And there's one worker sack in there. I don't know why there was a particular worker laid in there, but there was. And, and it's a worker because how little it is. So this particular, it could have been a queen if it was fed more, but it wasn't. So it wove its, uh, its cap to uh, go through its pupation. It was ready and it was going to become a worker. Look at all that grubbage. And as exciting as this is to see all this, and I figure this is a good time as any to tell you guys, I don't know where the shot is of me feeding this to the chickens. I looked and hunted and hunted, and I don't know if I just deleted it or what, but unfortunately I don't have that particular shot. But I had other nests that I let the girls peck apart, and... Um, and you get to see that at least feed on something because I wanted to include the girls in my videos now. A lot of you guys are disappointed if I don't include them and say I only came here for the chickens, quote unquote. So, um, even though this is a Hornet channel, <laughs> my girls are taking over and I'm alright with it because I love them. So, um, so without further ado, well, from left to right, Angel, Pigeon, and Ginger. And this was shot uh, about a week or so ago, and right now Pigeon looks like death because she's going through her molting stage. So she has feathers all over my yard and all over um, her coop, and she she's all straggly looking. And uh, it's better that it happens now than during the winter. I always feel bad for them during the winter when they go through a molting stage because they're out in the snow and stuff, and they're they're all bald looking. And Ginger usually molts during the winter. Um, not sure why her body decides that's a time for her to do it, but that's usually when she does it. Though her feathers are starting to look a little bit, a little bit fringed, so I'm wondering if she's not going to start going through her um, molting period as well. Basically, molting what it is is the 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 birds will drop their feathers and then they will regrow new feathers. It's a very very painful time for them. Um, they don't lay eggs. And uh, they can actually they can actually bleed to death if, um, if they get in a fight with another chicken um, during that that during that period. Angel, for whatever reason, seems to um, have periods of bleeding when she goes through her molting stages, and uh, we just have to kind of keep an eye on her because I've, I've had her bleed pretty good um, at the base of the feather where the quill is. Um, it's it can actually uh, at that, it's actually a very sensitive um, and and there's a lot of blood flow there so um, when they drop their feathers that's almost like an open wound and it becomes very very sensitive for them so I'm glad that she's going through it now and getting it out of the way before the winter time because could you imagine having open sores and being out in the cold um, and by me by meaning out in the cold um, they still come out of their coop and they roam around the yard even if it's snowing and uh, they're pretty diehard birds um, it's not a mu as much out there for them to eat, but I do feed them quite a bit um, of more like table food and stuff that they uh, they eat everything. Pizza, <laughs> anything. It's the funniest thing watching a chicken eat pizza. It's f really funny. They'll eat cheeseburgers. They eat anything. They are not picky, but they're pecky. The one making the noises, that's Angel. Hi, Angel. She's talking. I thought she had a tick, but she didn't have one. You just wanted to eat, so I let her go. So between that little song and Cheep Cheep Cheep, those are the, the two songs that they like. 
excited when I do that, make those noises. And I like to talk to them when they're talking to me, so it encourages them to talk more to me. So those yellow jackets nests, um, the big one in the middle, or to the right, that's a bald-faced hornet nest. And that was angel pooping. Their butthole's called a vent. <laughs> it's a funny word. It looks like man lips. Like, it's what her butt looks like. And what they poop out of is the same thing their egg comes out of. So think about that the next time you cook up some eggs. You'll wash them from now on, I bet. They're the best little vacuums. You, I mean, they're like little yard vacuums. Oop, go get her, Ginger. How dare her eat a larva next to you. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Um, if you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much for tuning in to check out my content and supporting my channel. Um, my GoFundMe campaign is still going on for my crowdfunding. And if you guys would like to donate and support my channel, you can just go to the link in the description. And uh, I appreciate any donations you guys can provide. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video.